I will not touch upon one single technical foil as I speak to you. So uh, you can just relax in that area. I will rather talk about Telenor, our operations. Uh, of course, that I need that as a backdrop to understand how we address corporate responsibility. And then finally, I will uh, end with uh, some examples. So the Telenor Group, we are actually more than 155 years old. Uh, we operate in a, a lot of countries, but uh, we are clustered in three areas, in the Nordics, in Central Eastern Europe, and in Asia. And uh, we, we say that in our control, we have about 100 million, 120 million subscribers. Actually, we control more of that because uh, we also are the ma main owner of Vimpelcom, which is also one of the world's largest mobile operations. As opposed to Karin, who talked about uh, them controlling more of the backbone in, uh, in a mobile value chain, we control the co total value chain, which means that we, our advantage is the simple fact that we can reach each and every one of these 120 million customers with messages uh, and, uh, and with assistance and help. And that's how we think about corporate responsibility. Now, I, uh, I really liked uh, Dr. Moyo's uh, statement about preparation. Partnership and preparation, that's what I took with me. And uh, we prepare. Uh, we really prepare before we enter a country. We prepare how we do business in a country. And we prepare how we align corporate responsibility uh, with our business. One of these ways, I'm sure you have seen this, uh, this uh, uh, example, but of course, we look at the uh, corruption percentage index. Of course we do that. We need to do that to also to see what sort of partnerships we would like to choose when we look at corporate responsibility. And this is how it looks for the Taylor Group. And that means that in some areas we are much more careful than in other areas, and we tend then to seek well-esteemed international partners. And let me be very clear on one thing. We are uh, Telenor Group is here to do business, pure and simple. We do not donate, Richard, lump sums of money. There was a time, though, that we found that uh, we actually did that. The, the difficulty was actually to get rid of the money because nobody wanted it. Now we seek partnerships, but we also use our knowledge and our experience to see how we integrate our work together with NGOs. So that's why we look at this one as well, the Human Development in Index. Because we are also extremely preoccupied with the fact that every country where we do business in, that they grow. And I will, I will show you examples later on on how the mobile usage actually influences the GDP in, in countries. So we take this one as well, and again, we prepare. And it is some sort of similarity between these two, these two graphs, and especially then, when we walk into how we build up the way we work with NGOs. We are a value-driven company. Everything Telenor does is driven by our values. The way we do our governance, reporting systems, the way we manage, the way we work with our employees, and the way we work with our uh, surroundings and societies should be built on our values, and I'm very proud of those. Those values, of course, also, tends to say, this is the way we want to do business. And we want to take that onto the way that we integrate corporate responsibility into our business. Because again, it builds pride. It builds pride if we engage our employees as well. And we do that every time. We use our knowledge, and I will give you several examples of how we used our technology knowledge, but also the fact that we are able to be project managers, etc. Uh, wherever we are around the world. And finally, I will give you then some examples about uh, two areas that we believe in. We believe highly in uh, M Finance, and we have a lot of examples of it. I heard a lot about one area here. Uh, we are quite proud of another area called uh, M uh, Easy Pesa in Pakistan, so I will give you that example. And then M Health, which is the other one. Just a backdrop, and I was happy to hear that our minister, she actually had the same uh, understanding from, the, from Jeffrey Sachs, the professor, uh, about the influence of the mobile phone. And here I will tend to disagree a little bit with Karim. I'm allowed to do that, Karim. We are partners as well. Uh, we don't believe in that plug in the wall. 
We believe in the mobility. Because it's the mobility that creates the options. And the mobility is there uh, because all of these people that are unserved around in rural areas, they don't have the plug in the wall. But they are mo mobile. And this is what we believe in. As you can see, if you increase or an increase of 10 mobile phones per 100 people, have done have true studies that we have done, you will see that that can increase the GDP growth for a nation by 1.2 percentage points. That is a lot. And then it's natural to think and easy to think that, OK, you're lucky because you're in the mobile world and you have this as a backdrop of your business, so you can just tie it together and then you can say this is corporate responsibility. No, again, we are prepared. Because as, as I, I was reading uh, through my, my slides and presentations last night, I was thinking, is there any other examples? Then I saw that one of the presenters here has a link towards uh, Coca-Cola. And it's easy to then think that, yeah, well, if you just hand out uh, bottles of Coca-Cola to, to people, that's not a corporate responsibility way. But if they really think on how to do CSR, they have one of the best distribution networks in the world. Could they use that to get a better business? I believe they could, and I would like to challenge them on that, on, on that one. Any which way, mobile telephony actually has a direct link towards the GDP growth over a lot of nations. So let me then move into M Finance, then serving the unbanked, as we call it. I'm um, also trying to keep it within the time limit so I don't get that red card. So it will be a little bit quick, but uh, you can ensure you can get the presentations later on. As we see it, there are close to 2 billion people within our reach that has a mobile phone. But at the same time, they are unbanked. That's a huge opportunity for these people. And we have also done studies together with Boston Consulting Group to see and look into the opportunities within these areas. And they are huge. And these numbers are just based upon five other countries where Telenor is represented. It's based on Pakistan, Bangladesh, India, Serbia, and Malaysia. And just within these five countries, these are the results we can get by banking people. This is good. But I believe in a greater cause about the M finance. And that comes within this area. Today, I mean, the most basic needs are there just to receive money. If you take countries like India and Pakistan, uh, India in particular, since I've lived there for some years, uh, you see that there's a lot, a lot of migration of workers from the Bihar area that was mentioned here, up in the north of India, down to the south. And they want to transfer money back to their families. But the ways they do it today, it only enhances corruption and, and, uh, and, uh, and it costs these people a lot more money. But by using the technology which is there, we can do it in a much more safe way. And even these people that transmit the money, they have ways to show the government that actually done it within, a, the, in, within the correct framework. So this is why the way we think about them finance. And that brings me to Pakistan and what we call easy pesa. That's our solution in Pakistan. So you see the, the New York Times was there, and uh, they took a look at our solution in Pakistan. And it works very well. And it reaches out to all the people, almost, uh, almost every single person within the whole of Pakistan. And uh, what it does, or what we can do, we can do utility bill payments, money transfers, mobile top-ups, donations, international remittance, salary dis uh, dis disbursements, and microloan payments. Almost without any cost at all for the individual. But more, more importantly, I think that within the four and a half years that we have been running this, we're now up to 1.5 million transactions per week. That makes us the biggest financial institution in Pakistan. We are a mobile company, but this fits very well together with the fact that it develops the nation. It creates business for us, make no doubt about it. But it also, and that's the second part about Dr. Moyer's statement, 
we cannot have done this without partnerships. We have to understand the world that we are doing business in. We do it together with partners, and it enhances our business. But at the same time, we can bring our values when we do it, about total transparency and about a way of doing business that is in line with what our stakeholders and shareholders want us to do. This is M Finance to us. Then we have M Health. And then you say, okay, M Health, that is purely in Asia, right? Or in Africa. No, it's not. For us, it's all around in every country that we operate. And I've just taken some examples because this is not all the countries that we are in. But as you see, we have provided M Health solutions even in Norway. So we need it here as well as a CSR uh, or as a corporate responsibility work. You have elderly people, you have disabled people that need to be connected, uh, and we do that through our mobile phone. So, so it's there as well. The challenges are pretty clear to all of you, I, I assume. But then the opportunities. Look at the opportunities within a single SIM card. Forget about the phone, because you will always know the phone is there, you can send SMSs and so on. But look at the SIM card and the possibilities. Cardinal was also talking about these transactions that happens now between machine to machine. It will explode. Every single car will have it, uh, a SIM in them, which is an uh, opportunity. But moreover, within the area of health, you can do diagnostics and everything if you use the mobile phone correctly. And you get the SIMs into every device. Unfortunately, I can also tell you that uh, your, your, your refrigerators will probably have a SIM card very soon. So it will tell you when you need to go, uh, go grocery shopping. That's beside the area. India, this one I know by heart. We then went down to the south of India in Chennai. We found a partner hand in hand in India. And we, we looked at the way to deploy our technology. But then we wanted to go a little bit further because uh, uh, you have to understand the whole value chain again. So we got money to support this initiative. We got it from something called USO Fund, which is actually just a, a tax that every single mobile operator pay for a government to bring that back to the society, but it never gets back to the society because no mobile operators find a way to actually bring it back to the society. So here's one. This support, or this initiative is supported by the Indian Prime Minister as one of his four most important initiatives. It has dual, uh, a dual way of working. Both, it helps females, women, to entrepreneurship. So we support them in setting up businesses in their rural areas. But at the same time, we address the health issue. And they get this mobile phone then almost for free because it's all being supported by either Telenor, hand in hand, or the Indian government themselves. Works very well. Then I'll be quick about Bangladesh. It's been mentioned before. Grameen Fund being the biggest company in Bangladesh, being the highest taxpayer in Bangladesh, have initiated uh, an initiative together with USAID, which has been running for some while. This also has had very, very positive effects. So we constantly think how to tie our business together with the corporate responsibility work. And that will be my message today. Create a partnership. I think it was great timing there, uh, both for NGOs, et cetera, but think about your core competence. Don't, uh, to, and that's to the, to the private businesses, don't think you are an NGO. We admit we are not an NGO. We will not step into that area, but we will create those strong partnerships because that's where we, I think that one plus one is more than two. Uh, two driving uh, areas within this, uh, this field, for, for mobile companies at least, M Finance and M Health. And finally, I think you need a little bit of passion and you need to have those sort of values in your company because you will constantly be tested. I know that from doing business both in Serbia and India. But if you stick with your values, and they're the core of how you drive your business, you will succeed. Thank you very much.